Stan Jibalisco here with explanations for all of the answers in the final exam for Geometry Demystified 2nd Edition published by McGraw-Hill the copyright date of 2011 you will find the final exam of this edition, the 2nd edition starting on page 340. So let's just get on with it. Question number one. Each vertex of a triangle corresponds to a specific interior angle that measures something. Well, here's a drawing of a generic triangle. A vertex is a corner or a point where two sides intersect and an interior angle is the angle between two sides at some vertex. So we have three interior angles and three vertices or vertexes, whichever you prefer. Now we're talking about a triangle that lies on a flat surface. Like the surface of this whiteboard, which looks beige in the videos, I'm aware of that. I, I, I kind of like that beige tint, which is caused by the light that I use in the room to illuminate this. That's a whole other topic, and that would be optics, and it's a mystery to me why it turns out beige, because it looks white to me now. This is a halogen lamp, and it shines on a white ceiling in a room with white walls and a white board, and it turns out beige. I don't know. Anyway, it, it provides a nice contrast, and here we are with this situation, a triangle. And the question is asking us how small or large any one of these angles can get. Well, if you will remember, the sum of the measures of any triangle's interior angles if that triangle is on a flat plane, always equals 180 degrees. We can never, by definition, have an angle that's negative. And by, by definition, generally in geometry, we don't talk about angles that are larger than 360 degrees or a full circle. 180 degrees is a half circle. If we add these angles up, we always get a half circle. The smallest possible angle in a triangle is not any specific number at all, but it must be larger than zero. We can squash a triangle down. Imagine moving this side down further and further and further. We can make the triangle flatter and flatter in this particular vertex is what we're dealing with must have an angle that measures more than zero. Conversely, we could extend the side up past where it is and keep going around and around until we almost got in the opposite direction, in which case the angle would be 180 degrees and then this whole triangle would flatten out again. 180 degree angle inside of a triangle wouldn't result in a triangle at all on a flat surface, nor would a zero degree angle. So the range of angles, if we call the interior angle X, it has to be larger than zero degrees, and it has to be less than 180 degrees at any given vertex. Well, that's not any of the answers here. We're talking about radians here. The equivalence in radians, zero, is less than the angle, is less than pi radians, pi radians. So the correct answer is D. Remember what a radian is in an angle. A radian represents a particular angle that
that turns out to be 1 over 2 pi of a circle. A complete circle has 2 pi radians of measure. So 1 radian is 1 over 2 pi of a circle. And you can calculate that. You can actually calculate that. It's around 57 degrees, but it's actually an irrational number because pi is a constant that's irrational and remember it's approximately equal to 3.14159. If you want to obtain pi on a calculator, by the way, enter minus 1 into your calculator, set the calculator to measure angles in radians, you'll need a scientific calculator to do this, set the calculator for angles in radians, and then take the inverse cosine of that. When you do that, you will get pi, and if you have a calculator like mine, a Windows 7 calculator, which is a I really like, you will get that sequence of numbers, 3.14159, and all the more that you could ever possibly have a need for. That's just a little trick. But getting back once again to this question, each vertex of a triangle corresponds to an interior angle that must be more than zero radians. but less than pi radians. So again, the answer is D. I hope you enjoy the rest of these videos. I'm constantly trying to improve them. If you have any suggestions, besides don't do them anymore, because I'm going to keep doing them, you can get to my email address by visiting my website at sciencewriter.net and you'll find links to a lot of other stuff a lot of other stuff about my other books in there and I've got some videos and some quiz answer explanations for those as well you may also like to know that this particular book, Geometry Demystified, second edition, has quiz answer explanations on my website. You can get to them just by visiting this site and it will be abundantly clear from the links, I hope, how you can get to them. So each and every one of the chapter ending quiz questions also has an explanation. Those are text, not videos. Good luck!